You are welcome to Assemblies of God Nigeria Sunday School. Today is 24th of May 2020. Before we go into our lesson today, shall we pray? In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. Father, we give you praise and glory for a new day you have given unto us. Give you praise and glory for the privilege you have given to us to listen to your word. May your word prosper us today. Give us understanding, hearts, and give us ability to comprehend your word and to apply your word to our various lives, that your name alone will be glorified. Thank you, Father, as you bless us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, our topic says, Amaziah and Uzziah the Foolish. Amaziah and Uzziah the Foolish. This is another series of our teachings, a Sunday school lesson on the kings of Judah. We started with Rehoboam, and then who was arrogant, we talked about uh, Joseph the Brave, and last week we were talking about Joash the Young. And today is Amaziah and Josiah the Foolish. Our memory phase is taken from Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. Pride go with before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Our central truth today says, God blesses the humble and opposes those who are proud. Our lesson is going to be taken from the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 25, verses 1 to 12, and chapter 26, verses 1 to 15. We shall be reading the scriptures as we proceed. Many young people today enjoy saying the choose your own adventure. Some do say uh, your destiny is in your hands. What we choose is what we become in life. God who created man gave man moral ability to make choice. Man is a free moral agent. As a result of that, man occupies himself with making one form of choice or the other. When we make good choices, we are bound to succeed. But when we make bad choices, we are bound to fail. There are various consequences as a result of making a wrong choice. Today, we want to look at these two kings of Judah, Amaziah and Uzziah. Let us just take a reading from Second Chronicles chapter 25. I would like to read from verse number 1. Amaziah was 25 years old when he became, he began to reign. And he reigned 22 and 9 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Joida of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. Now it came to pass when the kingdom was established to him that he, he slew his servants that had killed the king his father. And he slew not their children, but did it as it was written in the law of Moses, where the Lord commanded, saying, The father shall not die for the children, and neither shall the children die for the father, but every man shall die for his own sin. Now we are introduced to a man, one of the kings of Judah, known as Amaziah. Amaziah, of course, his name means the strength of the Lord, the strength of the Lord. And both of them, Amaziah and Uzziah, their names appear to mean the same. That of Uzziah means, Jah is my strength, or my strength is of the Lord, almost one and the same thing. We are told that God so blessed these leaders and blessed their leadership when they were faithful unto God. Just like our central to tell us that God blesses the humble but opposes the proud. God blessed their leadership when they started well with God and when they were faithful to God. There are a lot of attendant benefits when man remains faithful unto God. These benefits are tied to the covenant of that one has with God, which is on the basis of faithfulness. 
when we do our part of the covenant, God is always faithful to keep his own kind of covenant. Remember that God has always been in a way of protecting the dynasty of David, which he made a covenant with him. Here we see a king that came on board, and the Bible says he served God, but he did not, he did not serve God with his perfect heart. He did not serve God with his perfect heart. He was, he was doing the right thing in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. What an irony. They bore the evidence of God's blessings on their kingship because there was a blessing attached to their kingship. As once you become a king, according to the defined covenant, there were a lot of blessings attached to that kingship. And for one to uh, assess the blessings of God, one has to remain faithful unto God. When he came on board, the first line of action he took, of course, he was 25 years old when Messiah came, became a king of Israel, who happened to succeed his father that was assassinated. So he, he had to uh, execute judgment by assassinating the, the people that assassinated his fathers and leaving their children. Of course, keeping to the commandments of the Lord, or uh, the Bible has already said, do not touch my anointed. So he needed to, and do my prophets you know, I mean, he needed to execute that judgment uh, against those that assassinated his late father. Uh, the, the, the late father suffered abuse of the prophets, and he, the, the, those that assassinated him were, had to pay for it, for what they, they did. We, uh, the next thing that Amaziah did when he became a king was to launch, of course one of the things that kings in those days used to do was to make sure they protect their territorial integrity uh, by launching ferocious battles against their enemies to, to evade uh, invasions of enemies in their land. So the Bible says they had to look for military men, those that were from the age of 20 that were good for battle, and he had a selection of them. And that gave him about uh, uh, that, that. That gave him about some good number of soldiers. He had about uh, three hundred thousand of them. For him, the number was so small. He had to straightfold his hands and then bacon on some soldiers from the northern army. That is from Israel. He had about hundred of them, and then was quite very much ready to pay them and. He paid him a hundred tons of silver. Approximately that should have been about $16,500. He paid them so that they would come and assist him in the battle. For me, it was like undermining the strength of his army, those he mobilized locally. And the Bible does not tell us how much he paid those he, lo he mobilized locally. Of course, we see in the same thing, that is how some people use some people and dumb them. They will not encourage people around them to succeed. They will not do anything for people around them to succeed. They prefer do the outsiders. So, and as he was making his plan to get these armies, these mercenaries, the outside mercenaries for the battle, a man of God sent a man of God who came and gave him a warning and said, if you go with these soldiers from the outside, you will not win in this battle. And he, he, that he quickly obeyed the voice of the man of God, though he was he has already made that uh, a financial commitment to them. He was asking how far about the money I've already paid them. The man of God assured him that God will give him more. He had to forget about it. So he went for that battle, and God was with him in that battle. He fought the battle and succeeded. The people that he sent back, who couldn't go with him to the battle, became angry, and then they fought around the land, and they killed about 3,000 persons and made plunders of them. When Amaziah went for that battle, he fought that battle and win. And, of course, we see here that the weapon he wanted to use was a compromised weapon, which God may not want to use. The Bible says some people trust in their chariots, some people trust in their, uh, their horses, it's always proper that one put his trust in the Lord. It doesn't matter the number of weapons you carry. The Bible says the weapons of warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God, to the pulling down of the songs of the enemy. You don't need to go with millions before you can win a battle. 
Yes, you don't need to go with billions of soldiers before you win a battle. All you need to do is involving God in every battle. When God is involved in whatever you do, you are bound to succeed. He succeeded because God went with him. God saw him through. He had, if he had gone with those armies, he wanted to go with the Lord said he would not go with them. So he had to obey the man of God. As long as he obeyed the man of God, God went with him and he won in that battle. We also see uh, how God blessed the leadership of Uzziah when we turn to Second uh, Chronicles chapter 26 from verse number 1 to verse number 15. God blessed Uzziah. Uzziah came on board as a king of Israel who succeeded Messiah, his father, at the age of 16. He became a king in Israel. When he became a, a king, there was one strategic thing that Uzziah did. The Bible says he sought the Lord and not understanding of visions. He sought the Lord in the days of Zechariah and not understanding of visions. Let's read from verse 1. Then all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and he and made him king in the place of his father Messiah. He built Eliot and restored it to Judah. After that, the king kept slave with his fathers. Sixteen years old was Uzziah when he began to reign, and he reigned for fifty and two years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Eucolia of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord according to all that his father Messiah did. And he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding of in the, in the visions of God, and having sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. This was the great thing that he did. He restored worship. He reigned for 52 years in Jerusalem. God blessed his leadership. That longevity that the Lord gave him was as a result of the fact that the Bible says he sought the Lord. He sought the Lord. He was not a long-lasting king because he had all the wisdom. He has all the might. All the, as for the Bible says, it's not by power nor by might, but by the Spirit of the Lord. What gave him such strength? What gave him so, that huge success was because he sought God. He sought God. He had understanding of the visions of God. He was under a proper mentoring, a proper priesthood. And the Bible says he prospered. He prospered. And he sought the Lord. What does it mean to seek the Lord? It means getting yourself connected to God. It means involving God in leadership. Involving God in the matter of governance. Nobody should ever think you can do anything without God. The Bible says, Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. We need to get God involved. We need to seek for his counsel. Seek for his advice. Seek for instruction. Seek for his leadership. Seek for his direction. Once we do that, you see God leading you. You see God guiding you. You see God directing you on what to do. That was the secret of Uzziah's success. He sought the Lord. He responded to the word of God. He, he, he sought the Lord, and the Bible said God made him to prosper. That prosperity affected his kingdom, affected his leadership, because he was a godly king at that time. He sought the Lord, and God prospered him. When we are faithful to God, the next thing God will do for us is that we will be fruitful. If you are faithful, you will be going to become fruitful. Of course, in the sense of Nigeria, we emphasize the month of loyalty, the month of faithfulness, the month of commitment, the month of telling God that you are still on the same page with him. Some people are so far away from God, even though they are in church, they are far away from God. Uh, we know that this is a period of pandemic, and uh, so many people uh, take the leverage of there is no church, and they don't even worship God in their houses. Uh, they don't see the need to worship God. And of course, by the time you are doing that, you are, you, are, you are not proving your word to God. You are not letting God know that you are serious with him. He sought the Lord. He sought the Lord. He gave himself attached to God. And the second segment of our lesson talks about the, the foolishness of this king. The foolishness of this king. What made them foolish? In the first place, let's look at the life of Amaziah, his provider. Amaziah, foolishness. The foolishness was as a result of when he went for the battle and conquered. Let's go back to that chapter 25 of our second chronicles. Let's read verse number 14 and, and look at how foolish he became. And it came to pass after that Messiah was come from the slaughter of the Edomites, that he brought the gods of the children of Zeh and set them up to be his gods and bowed down himself before them. And born incense unto them. What a tragedy. 
Amaziah became foolish because when he went for the battle, he went with God. He came back with the battle and returned with the gods of the land. To his own palace, to his own territory, the gods of the land. The gods of the land. And when he did that, it was like telling God, you are nobody. God raised a prophet who confronted him again and told, and told him, why did you go and bring these gods of the people you defeated? If the gods were so strong enough, why didn't he deliver the people from your hands? The God that could not deliver the people out there, they are the gods you are, you are, you are importing into your country. You see, some people in their position of leadership begin to import foreign ideas, foreign gods, demons into their land. Some begin to see, some begin to bring sanctums. Some begin to build altars for demons. Some begin to worship so many things. Some begin to take ideas, foreign ideas, foreign gods, foreign ideologies. Because when you talk about a God, a God is anything that takes the place of God in your life. Money can become your God. Position can become your God. When you are power drunk, you, that has become your God. When you are when a position of leadership and you don't regard God, you don't have any respect for God, you don't have respect for the things of God. The Bible says, by strength shall no man prevail. God will let you know that he is an alpha, an omega. He's a reigning king. When he did that, that was a kind of a, a, a kind of looking down on God, and God was uncomfortable. The man of God came to him again and said, "Why do you go and do that? You you go and imported foreign gods into your land, into your land, and started worshiping." The Bible says he brought these gods and called his his own gods, and bowed down himself before them and burned incense unto them. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine the imagination of human beings? He became foolish. Because Amaziah should have known that God went with him for a battle and succeeded because of God. Why then? Why do you now come back with the gods of the land and start burning incense and start bowing down and call them your personal God? So the God of heaven was not, not your personal God. May the Lord help us in the mighty name of Jesus. In case there is anything that has pushed you to a wrong direction and you start patronizing uh, prayer houses, you start patronizing Hebalists. You start patronizing you priests. You start going to water to, to worship. You start, they gave you a stone and said, this stone will pre uh, preserve you. They gave you candle. They gave you a sick. You start mixing up things. You mix religion. You mix worship. That amount to double loyalty. And there's no way you'll be worshiping two gods at the same time. So like in the days of jo Joshua, Joshua told the people and said, you better choose. Make a choice. So we see that the king made a foolish choice. The choice that the king made was a foolish one because the gods he defeated their people when now became his personal gods. His personal god that he had to bow down, he had to burn incense. And when the man of God confronted him that what he has done is not proper, he now insulted the man of God and saw me as a, a man and said, look, you are not even part of the kingdom. And was so furious with the man. Was so furious with the man. That was a kind of foolish decision, choice that the king made. Worshipping the great creatures instead of the creator. That is why the Bible says, he actually did what was right in the sight of God, but with not with a perfect heart. And there are so many people out there, you are doing the right thing, but not, you are worshipping God, but not with a perfect heart. You are worshipping God, yet... You are still telling lies. You are worshipping God, yet you are still maintaining concubines. You are worshipping God and you are still cheating. You are worshipping God. You are going to church. You are an elder in the church. You are a pastor. You are still doing every abomination, abominable act. You are still fornicating. You are still doing terrible things in the eyes of the Lord. You are not worshipping God with a perfect heart. And God has taken notice of the way we worship him. God does not want us to mix our devotion unto him. God does not want us to divide our devotion unto him. God is a jealous God. You cannot be worshipping God and worshipping something else. You cannot be worshipping God and worshipping mammon. You cannot be worshipping God and use... You are a member of a fraternity. You are a member of a, a cult. You are a member of secret society. You say you are still worshipping God. You are an elder in the church and yet you are a member of one fraternity or the other. You are a pastor and yet you belong to one cult or the other. You are not worshipping God. 
No wonder the Bible says the Lord knows those that are his. And those that name him the name of the Lord, let them depart from iniquity. Of course, you know that when one shows partial obedience, partial obedience is no obedience at all. Partial obedience is no obedience at all. It's, you either worship God or you stop worshiping him. You either serve God or you serve something else. You cannot be serving God and, and then serving another thing. The two cannot go together. The Bible says the two cannot work together except they agree. We also see that these were the cause that he defeated, that he now started to worship. That was a mark of unfaithfulness and God was not happy with him. God was not happy with him. We also see that, that his reign did not last. Because he started showing God this disloyalty, there were a lot of consequences. Of course, you know that every disobedience has uh, corresponding consequences, damaging effects. Because he was no more worshipping God, he exposed himself to so many other things and uh, that affected his, his, his life, that affected him seriously. When you read chapter 25, verse 17 to 25, 17 to 25, and Amaziah, king of Judah, took advice and sent to Joash, the son of Joadas, the son of Jehu, king of Israel, saying, Come, let us, let, come, let us see one another at, in the face. And Joash, king of Israel, went to Amaziah, king of Judah saying, The thistle that was in Lebanon sent to the cedar uh, uh, that was in Lebanon, saying, Give thy daughter to my son for a wife. And this and this passed by a wild beast that was in the Lebanon and threw down the thistle. Thou sayest, Lo thou has been smitten, thou hast smitten the Edomites, and thy heart lifted up to boast. Abide now, thou shouldest fall, even thou, and Judah with thee. But Amaziah would not hear, for it came of God, for it came of God that he might deliver thee into the hand of those enemies. Because they sought after the gods of Edom. So Joash the king of Israel went up and they saw one another in the face. Put he and Amaziah king of Judah at Beth Temas, which belonged to Judah. And Judah was put to the wars before Israel and they fled every man to his tent. This was what disobedience and disloyalty to God brought to Amaziah. He went for a battle. He had to go into alliance with the, 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 the king of the northern kingdom and said, Come. The, the man came and, and just gave him a story. Gave him a story. And the Bible says that very day, because he could not listen to the voice of the Lord, he was defeated. Every man ran to his tent. Every man ran to his tent. And what next that happened to, to him, when you go down to verse number 25, the Bible says, that Isaiah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, lived after the death of Joash, son of Joash, king of Israel, 15 years. Now the race of the acts of Amaziah, first and the second, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. That was how Amaziah ended up his leadership. He ended up in strategy. He ended up as an unbeliever. He ended up, he, end, he started in the spirit and ended up in the flesh. He started as a Christian and ended up as a non-Christian. He started as a believer and ended up as a non, uh, as an unbeliever. Because he forsook the counsel of the Lord. He forsook the word of God. But this is the same man that listened to the word of God the other time. This time around, he didn't want to listen to the word of God. He went for a battle because God didn't go with him. And he lost in that battle. He lost in that battle because of the foolish choice that he made. It's true that your life is your own. You can choose whatever you want to do. But it's proper that you choose what is good. Because when you choose a wrong thing, always bear in mind. 
they are uh, there are consequences as a result of the wrong choice you make in life. There are consequences. Let us also look at the life of Josiah, who made a foolish choice also by disobeying God. In Second Chronicles chapter twenty-six, verse sixteen to eighteen, the chronicler assessment of Josiah. Uh, 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 success also talk about the significant failures of his leadership. Josiah was prosperous as long as he sought the Lord. In other words, his prosperity was tied to seeking the Lord. His failure came when he was no more seeking the Lord. The Bible says at a point in his leadership, his heart rose. He became proud he became proud just like his father messiah became proud he became proud he could be taught he did it by himself he did it by his strength he did it by his might he did it by his energy it was his money that saved him no it wasn't these things what was saving him and sustaining him was because he saw the lord when Josiah lifted up his soul he became proud how do we know it the the, 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 the the lesson says he committed almost the same sin with the first uh, sin of Israel. You know, when Saul went for a battle and conquered in that battle, the Bible says he brought the king back, he brought the fat animals back and all that. That was exactly that the same thing that almost happened to Josiah. When he fought and succeeded in that battle, uh, we are told that at a point it was not the duty of the priest to enter the temple and burn incense. He had to enter an office and did what was not expected of his office. You know, it is always said that power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Sometimes when you're in position of leadership, you, 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 you start, you feel that you can do anything. You can do anything. No respect for God, no respect for the things of God. And you don't, obs- uh, you don't obey the ranks and the files. You don't obey those that were there before you. You insult the leaders. You, you don't want to lo- listen to the elders. That was the problem of this young man known as Josiah. He did not want to follow instruction. He felt that he had to take the, the, the work of the priest and did it. And when he was confronted by a man of God, he became angry with the man of God. And be, when he became angry, the Bible said, why he was he holding the censer in his hand? God struck him with leprosy. He became leprous. And the leprosy was such that it, not just the uh, leprosy without the physical sign, it was such a leprosy that when he shows on his body, he was ostracized. He was sent out of the city because a leper cannot live with other human beings in the land. He left the palace and became leper. The Bible says he remained a leper until he died. He remained a leper until he died. When you read the prophecy of Isaiah, you hear more about it. When Isaiah said, I saw the Lord in the days of Josiah, and, and then he saw the Lord and all that, and Josiah, he, he saw the Lord when Josiah, the, the year that King Josiah died. There are some, pe- some people sometimes do misinterpretation by saying, oh, Josiah must die for Isaiah to see the Lord, which is wrong. The Bible says he remained leprous. He remained a leper because he forsook the Lord. He became angry, he became proud. That is in line with a memory phrase that says that pride goeth before destruction. A haughty spirit before a fall. God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. I pray for you today. I don't know what you are learning from this lesson. May you ask God to help you to live a, a life of humility. Because the Bible says, riches and honor come when there is humility, when we humble ourselves. God opposes the proud. I don't know what you learn from the lesson. I don't know what you learn from the lesson. It is good that we listen to God's instructions. It is good that we, we, we start, we, we keep seeking God, we keep obeying God. When we do that, God is going to help us and, and God will sustain our prosperity. God will sustain our blessing. God will sustain our leadership. I pray for you today. May this lesson be a blessing to your soul, a blessing to your life, a blessing to whatever you set your hands to do. May God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for having an opportunity to listen to this message. The National Sunday School Assembly of Nigeria will come your way by the grace of God next week. May you remain blessed and stay safe in Jesus name. Amen.